Hello, I am Kenny, please heal me of Mount Tyrannus Terra Good Fight. I've been playing for quite a while, and here I'm going to be showing you how to optimize your Terra resource usage and FPS resource usage. So my first guide, Improved Terra FPS by 50%, was quite uh, successful and many people found it useful. A couple things have changed in the file since then, and I've also found new things that have also help uh, improve your Terra gaming's performance. And I'm going to be going over those things in this guide. I say th these things are pe things that people, sh every single player should do. And if I something is not, I will specifically say it before I go over that section. So first we go to the first two links. I will be linking these to the description of the guide so you can click them. Brinsticles Terror Optimization Guide. And uh, Tech Dudes 99% Guide. Both of these guides were on Terror today, but the website went down. But uh, we have them backed up to other websites. So first, full screen. In game, what you do is you press O, or you go to the gear and you press options. Video, you can go to full screen, windowed, or windowed full screen. I prefer windowed full screen because full screen, while it gives you slightly better performance and resource usage, resource usage it gives you a very annoying <laughs> time when you tap out. It's a black screen for quite a while. Not very nice. So, and it's not a very big gain, so definitely worth using windowed full screen. Next, we skip all the way down to. Okay, so this is what we're going to be using Tech Dude's Guide, so we'll skip over this part. Down to for changing field of view. Where we go is we press Windows key plus E. What we're going to do is locate our Terra Wind folder. Most people have it in C, Program Files, and then Terra. Personally, I have mine in Video, Terra. So after we get to the Terra, we go to Client, S1 Game, Config. And we find our S1 input.ini. How do we open it? We right click it, open with Notepad. Alternatively, you can do download Notepad++, which I'll be using. To open it, I just drag it over to Notepad++, and it's very easy to read. So first, make sure that uh, where you click it, it's not read-only, read-only off. This makes it so that we can edit it. And then first, we're going to be looking at the FOV line. So these is line 9 and 10. Okay, basically, when I click end on my keyboard, it sets my FOV to 90, and when I click home, it sets it to 71. 71 is the default FOV. That's what we start to look at right now. When I press end, it zooms me out bef beyond the in-game limit. I can press home, and I'm back at the default. This is very useful for hero hold, where there's firewalls. Hero hold is 30-man raid, and uh, it lets me see all the firewalls incoming before at a much, much easier time, so I don't have to move my camera around and uh, lose track of where I'm looking. So basically all we do is we take the, these two lines, which will be in the description, this is what yours will look like, and then you paste them. Then the next thing we do is be enable mouse smoothing. Basically what this is, at first it starts at a default value of true, and that's something we don't want. So what happens is this, when you have bad FPS, it makes your aim really, really bad. And this is something that affects every single player. So what we do is we click backspace, 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 and we type false. Then we click save after those two changes have been made. Then we go back to here. We look at config. We left click, properties, click read only, OK. This makes it so our file can't be edited, can't edit it. This is important because when the game opens, it loads these files and uh, it will create a new one. And it, it'll get rid of these three lines that we just changed, slash added, and that's not good. Okay, next, reduce UI lag. So in game options, audio, interface effects, we turn this to zero. Also, the only sound you actually need is effects. What it does is skill sounds and boss animation, boss attack sounds. 
then you can alter the master sound to make it sound louder and softer. Then hyper threading. This is for Intel 7th generation and beyond uh, central processing units CPU. I don't have one, I have an i5 CPU, so I can't see how useful it is. Then overclocking. For GPU, I personally do not recommend it. It's not a very big gain, it often causes crashing very hard to do. For Terra, very a lot easier for other games, but I personally don't recommend it because I destroyed my first GPU a lot faster than I should have because of it. For CPU, I use Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. If you don't have Intel for your, uh, for your CPU, you may have to use a different software. Basically all I did was change the core to 44 over here in my voltage here and this voltage. This is something you shouldn't do unless you're very comfortable for your computer. What you want to do is you just type what brand it is and then you type your, your CPU. So I have an Intel i5-4670K and I want to type overclock guide and then you go from there. Again, only do it if you're very comfortable and this risks damaging your computer. So only do it if you're very comfortable with what you're doing and computers in general. Next we go to text guides. Again, this link will be in the description. We will scroll down to section for S1 engine. So we click the diff now site right here, link. This opens this. So <clears throat> on the left side is the default S1 engine. This is what you have currently. And on the right side is mine. Tech dude's guy goes off of lines that he had for this for a different diff now, but his diff now has expired. So I had to use my own. So the lines are a bit off, but I will be uh, making clearing up the differences in this guide. So there will be no difference to you. <clears throat> so the first step, you want to identify what uh, graphics card you have. If you don't know, what is my graph graphics card? And then you find it. Personally, I know what mine is, so I just copy paste it. Paste it. This is the site I bought it off of. And then here I look for the size. I personally do that I have uh, 2 GB of RAM on mine. This is called onboard uh, RAM for your GPU. So the 2 GB is an important number that we will be looking at. <sighs> okay, so first explaining the differences of what this is. So we can see it that the first difference, the first mentioned line is 22. Disable censorship of profanity in chat. It's called be allow mature language. By default, it's false. We have edited it to be true. Oh, sorry, I didn't mention what we're changing. So this is the S1 engine file. It's in the same place as the con uh, Terra client S1 game config. Same place as their S1 input. Hey, S1 engine's right here. Basically all we do, open with notepad, or we can drag it into our notepad plus plus. And then say we wanted it to, that by default, it's false. We want to change it to true so because uh, we want to see stuff. Haha. <laughs> okay, so then. Okay, so actually, all you have to do, that's like what, if you want to change every single line. And go through every single line. But basically, all you have to do is uh, go to the right side, highlight everything all the way down. Make sure everything's highlighted, click copy. We go here. What we do is we hit control A, it selects everything, then we can hit backspace and it's deleted. Control B, everything's pasted. Okay, scrolling to the top. So what we're gonna be changing is things that differ from my PC to your PC, GPU specific. As we saw before, I had an NVIDIA, which is important. So we see for line 115, False if on NVIDIA, true if on others. <clears throat> uh, 
B. Disable physics hardware support. False if on NVIDIA, true if on others. So we go to our file, <clears throat> we can hit Control F, copy, paste, find next. We type by default, this is set to true, but we have NVIDIA, so I set it to false. Next specific line, 137, false of an ATI. This is called disable ATI texture filter optimizations check. I have NVIDIA, so I set it to true. True on others. Next line below it, 138. <clears throat> false of an NVIDIA, that's us. True on others. Use minimal NVIDIA driver shader optimization. False for NVIDIA. Okay, next important line. Uh, I forgot to say it. 145, texture cache. Cache size mix. So I have 2 GB, so I have 10, 4, 10, 24. So what we can do is calculator 10, 24. This is for 2 GBs of onboard RAM for your graphics card. If you have 1, divide by 2. <clears throat> 512, what we do is cache size mix, copy notepad, control find, paste, find next. Here, so if I had 1 GB, type in 5112, 512 rather. If I had 4 GB, take this number times 4, 2048. Okay, next important line. 181 to 183. Okay, this is a bit different from the last time. Max stale cache size, max overall cache size, package size, soft limit. So I have 2 GB, so they're 150. If you had 1 GB, we divide by 3 times by 2, 100. If you have 1 GB, you would go to here and you'd delete the 150 and you'd type 100. Alternatively, if you had 4 GBs, you take it times 2, 200. This is 4 gigabytes of onboard RAM on your graphics card. All the numbers I will be inputting will be for 4. The numbers that are already in there are for 2. Then we do it for the next two lines, 150 and 1050. 450 divided by 3 times 2, 300 for 1 GB times 2, 600 for 4 GB. 1050, 1050 divided by 3 times 2, 700 for 1 GB times 2, 400 or 1.4K for 4 GB. 2 GB is what I have already put down. Next important one is our screenshot path. If you don't have this, you won't be able to save screenshots. So you'll see that mine is uh, this, and this leads to here. What you want to do is you want to locate your screenshot folder. Currently, press this, then copy. Let's see, this is one 193. I guess it's 194 over here. So we go over here and then paste. DC users, pinnas, screenshots, etc. Because <clears throat> that's where you, you want to say it, get to wherever you have your screenshots folder. Now we go to the next line. Specific 307 texture pool. Pool size 1050. Again, this is uh, another thing. Let's see, where was the line? 308. 308 pool size 1050. 
we go to our calculator, 1050 divided by 3 times 2. This is 1 gigabyte of onboard RAM. This is what I checked on Amazon before. Times 2 if you have 4. And 1050 if you already have 2. Okay, next important line. The line directly below it. This is a... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, that's just a copy-paste. Nothing to change there. Let's see, 309 and 313. Okay, these lines. It's from 10 to 14. Oh, 10 to 14. So we go to 310. I guess it's three. I guess our line doesn't matter. What we're looking for is the hysteresis limit. So for me, I have two GB. So I have uh, inputted 30. So 30 divided by three times two. 20 if you have one GB times two is 40 if you have four GB. And then we do the same for this, the next three. 90 divided by 3 times 2, 60 for 1 GB times 2, 120 for 4 GB, 120, 120, 120. Then let's see what else do we have here. Min evict size. Here again, 10 for 1 GB, 15 for 2, 20 for 4. <clears throat> okay, next important line. Specific, specific, where's it? system specific. Okay, this is your total system RAM. So this is something that would be uh, related to your kind of uh, task manager RAM. So this is RAM, not your onboard memory RAM. So this is another thing like you can Google, how much RAM do I have? Personally, I know that I have 8. Okay, I guess that's not loading, but uh, <laughs> I have 8. So we go to 590. 590, okay, 591. F light primitive interaction block size. So I have 8. So 2, two, 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 two. that's for 8. If you have 4, you divide that by 2. If you have two, you divide again. This is for uh, one gigabyte. Oh, but no, never mind. This is two. Sorry. Oh, losing my mind. Divide again. This is one GB. And then if you have 16 GB, two, 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 times by two. And that's 16 GB. And we go to 591 ish again uh, we could just uh, copy find next then the value we found what for 16 gigabytes of ram was this we type it for those two lines okay next specific next specific gpu and cpu Okay, so basically for Terra, your GPU is almost always going to be your specific, your your, your throttle. This basically means that, uh, all right, let's see, which lines am I looking at? 620, uh, okay, 619, 620. Basically, your GPU is never going to be your throttle on Terra. It's always going to be your CPU. So you're basically in, don't bother changing anything because Terra is a heavily CPU game and uh, CPU only goes so far. Okay, these aren't actually specifics, just leave them as they are. Okay, 131 or 631, sorry. These depends on how strong your CPU is. So you can just change it to whatever value you want depending on the multiples of 2. So you want to have it, uh, let's see, 2, 4, 8, 16 only.
higher number, I have it at 16, lower number, more qual more performance, higher or more performance, less quality. The quality the difference is very small, so I just leave it at 16. Okay, next line. Uh, again, something similar, higher performance, lower performance, etc. Okay, that's it for this. Now we're done with our S1 engine. We save it. Then we go to config file, we located properties, and we click read only. Again, this is the same reason as S1 input. This makes it so that when the game starts up, it does not change it and revert all the thing we just did. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we want to locate our Terra launcher. So we go to our, we find our Terra folder, Terra client, this one game. Or, no, where am I going? The heck? Uh, properties, do do do, Terra, Terra, okay, Terra launcher. <laughs> Again, going back, Terra, find Terra folder and it's directly there. What we want to do is create a shortcut, and then we click properties. Uh, okay, please open. Properties. So here's what it is. We basically what I want to do is just take this, copy, paste, and then OK. And then we want to drag this to somewhere we want that we will be clicking it. So for example, take it and drag it onto our desktop. And then from now on, it will enable those lines. This is making sure your thing uses cores and then uh, some other stuff. Oh, sorry. I forgot to do one thing for the S1 engine file. So if we go back to client, S1 game, config, S1 engine properties, make sure we set it not to read only so we can edit again. This is also quite important. This is a CPU specific change. CPU number of logical processors. This is how many cores your CPU is. How many cores does my CPU have? And then you do that to find it. So I have four, so I take this number and I type four. If you have one, type one. If you have eight, you type eight, etc. Save it. Again, we go here. Properties, read only, okay. Okay, that's it for text dudes guide. Now we go on to this one. This link will also be in description. This is an NVIDIA only tweak. So if you don't have NVIDIA, sorry. But uh, there are some other things you can do. But first, I guess we'll go through the in-game changes. Uh, in-game options, video, character. Well, I guess first uh, what we can do what we want to do is take our character and drag it to zero. Take our shadow, drag it to zero. And real time, other, scroll down to other. Real time optimization zero, effects optimization zero. Those are things everyone should do. Here's also some things that are kind of optional. P P uh, PC view distance, I wouldn't change, I would leave that a maximum if you're PVP here. If you're a pv -er, just change it to 4. Environmental detail, change it to 4. Landscape, 3. Effects distance, again, if you're a pvp -er, leave it at maximum. Background distance, change it to 3 for everyone. Okay, now getting on to the NVIDIA specific one. So we go to the NVIDIA control panel. How do we access it? We go to the right, we go to our desktop, 
we right click and video and then we left click and video control panel it opens up okay so here we want to go to manage 3 CD settings add desktop we'll say I was here so we go to manage 3d settings and we go to program settings we wait for it to load we click add and then we click browse then we go and we want to locate our Terra then you just click your Terra uh, where is it? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. So where it is? Videos, Terra, client, binaries, Terra.exe. Then we click open. And then we will be editing these things. So the first thing we want to change is go to ambient occlusion, first thing on the list, and click reformance, filtering, X4. Uh, you can, uh, if you have uh, performance problems, just change it to off. Then Intel Analyzing, this is on. Off if you have uh, performance problems, gamma correction. Again, on, but off if you have performance problems. Override any application setting. Again, the performance issue uh, change is very small between these things. So just... Uh, Start off with what I have here first. Then maximum pre-rendered screen uh, frames. At default, it's the, and then you may want to change it to three. Power management mode to prefer maximum performance. Texture filtering, anisotropic sample stuff. And then we change it to off. Texture filtering, negative LOD bias, allow. Try linear optimization off, threaded optimization on. Then the important step of uh, clicking apply afterwards. Also make sure that all of these, okay, it takes first, it takes a while after you click apply to start responding again. So make sure that all your other settings are the same as mine too, as my global settings are not the default. For example, uh, make sure that this says one and whatever else I've is as you have it. And that's basically what this says. Then the next thing. This is a piece of software and this lets you choose uh, what has priority on your CPU. <clears throat> so you just go click download, keep, and then you just go through the process of whatever. This might require a uh, reboot afterwards to make sure it start, uh, starts working. So what we do is so we open the task manager, we go to our test bar, we right click, task manager, and then we will go, we see Terra right here, the all important Terra, right click, go to details, Terra.exe, and then we click make sure save priority is checked. This is something that uh, Prio has added for us. Then select CPU priority. We can change it to whatever we want, but uh, make sure you do not change it to real time. Real time is bad. If uh, it can go to the point where it overrides all your mouse and keyboard input, and you won't be able to close the application. So never use real time. Only go as high as high. And basically what Prio does is after I restart my computer, it'll still have terror as a priority high. This is important because, say I was running, uh, I don't know, maybe I was watching a stream. If the stream you know, opening Twitch itself uses a lot of CPU, it might cause me to like, uh, start losing frames in Terra, and then I die or something. Watching a stream also uses CPU. Uh, this makes sure that Terra gets enough CPU to maintain optimal FPS. It puts it before the stream. Again, this is Prio Priority Saver. I will link this in the description as well. 
And then the next thing is COF. Or COS. Okay, so what this does is it's bandwidth prioritization. So this lets me change Terra to click download this one, download COF speed, download, starts within 10 seconds, 5 seconds. So what this program allows me to do is prioritize Terra as my bandwidth. Then you click keep, and then you go through the install process. And this is what this is. So once we have it installed, we right click it. Da, 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 da. Print connections. This will open up a tab in our uh, browser. And here we can take Terra and we can click it to higher. We want Terra to be higher than say like Chrome. It's not very important while I'm gaming. I can put it to default. Uh, if I had Discord open, Discord takes a lot of messages in and out, but I don't really care about the messages coming out in and out when I'm playing Terra. So take Discord and I can put it at lowest because I don't really care about it. This makes sure that my ping stays optimal and does not change when I'm like, for example, if I'm streaming, this will make sure that I'm still getting a low ping in Terra, or if I'm watching a stream while playing Terra, I still have good ping in Terra. <clears throat> this is a 30 day trial thing. Afterwards, you have to buy it, but uh, I definitely recommend it if you uh, want to stream. Otherwise, to see if it makes any difference during the trial period and you can decide whether or not you want it. Now is a UI change. So you may notice that in game, like around my skill border, there's no border around the entire skill bar. I like this. So what I do is I go to this website, which I will link in the description, click download here, preparing download, it appears. Click it. You can download WinZip to open it. WinZip download. WinZip download. So here we click unzip. <clears throat> and then where did it? Then we if we hover over here we see it's where it's extracted to. See users can eat documents. So we again Windows E, Documents, Shortcut Tray, and we get these two files. Basically what we wanted to do is take these, copy both of them, and then we go to our Terra directory, Terra, Client, S1 Game, Cook PC, Art Data Packages, and then we want to make a new folder and name it underscore s1 ui it's important that it's capitalized and then again i already have one so here we're going to open this folder that we just created and we're going to paste i already have those two so it's already there <clears throat> this is a ui effect and uh, just is a nice quality of life thing uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Next is uh, advertisement, please no. Okay, next is my uh, HP bar. You can see my HP bar looks a bit different than yours. My things highlighted, this is all optional. Here's some things that just look nice. Again, this link, Owens UI mods. You can download the one that I'm using right there. These do not use because uh, Terra has recently changed it. So you no longer need the party window ones because you can hide the debuffs at will now. This is again optional, just makes things transparent. Do not use those because uh, these chat window, because they are just not good for your, uh, they can pro cause issues. Again, main menu, it lets you drag it off your screen, but again, can cause issues, so I would not use it. VIB bar, same. Damage numbers. This is purely cosmetic. Uh, for performance, it makes it harder to see what the numbers actually are, so I personally do not recommend them. And S1 Engine edits that we did, 
might make it so that we are blurred, so they don't actually look nice. And then boss bar, this has been fixed, but it's optional. Basically, there used to be an issue where the boss bar, it would vibrate a lot and cause huge FPS issues. It's been mostly fixed, but if you'd want to download it, you can use this link. Download without holding periodic buffs. Making your debuffs look smaller, this one, larger, this is fine. Uh, cosmetics, making your teammates' things look change dif uh, look a different color. Crosshair, removing the animation. This is the, uh, the crosshair in the center of your screen, the animation of it. I personally do not recommend it because uh, aiming is important. <laughs> Make sure you know how to aim, though it's optional. Use if you like. Again, purely cosmetic with the when you complete a vanguard, how it looks, transparent, the battleground score transparent, optional. <sighs> okay, that's it for that one. Next is a terraform post. So this is, we scroll down to enable NVIDIA ambient inclusion. This requires NVIDIA expector, download link included. download. Okay, so once we have it downloaded, we open it up. Uh, opened, and we click this thing, Start Profile Expector. It's right next to driver version. We, and over here, we type Terra, then we left click on the Terra. Basically, this ambient inclusion makes your game look nice has a bit of UC, uh, GP usage, but uh, it's not much and it has a very large effect on how good the game looks, so I recommend it. <clears throat> so here we go to ambient occlusion compatibility. That is this. By default, it is 000. We look for 26 at the end, which is there. Then we click apply changes. Next is ambient occlusion usage. They're under common usage. We click to enabled. Set it, this. We click to performance, or you can click quality optionally. Then you click apply. Let's see. Next one. Next Terraform post. Okay. Post process injection. I ha absolutely hate Terra er, Sweet Effects. Do not use it. Never use it. Put stuff in your game files all over hidden and you do not want them It does not do anything but make your game look worse and play worse. Do not use sweet FX Next is the uh, Nvidia control panel. This is the stuff I was going off, off about later or earlier And here we're back at the Nvidia inspector again We can change our texture filtering options Do, 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 do texture filtering. This you would change to two off two four twelve sixteen. User define uh, do, 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 do. texture filtering. Okay, you turn that to off. Make sure these two are off. Filter optimization, sample optimization, the negative LOD BIOS. This says clamp, but I you have to put allow instead. Try and learn optimization, make sure that's off. Then anti-analyzing. Okay, so anti-analyzing has a large CPU effect, or a GPU effect, but uh, <laughs> gives very, very small change. Basically, all it does is uh, make the ground look nicer. But uh, who's looking at the ground anyway? But uh, if you have CP GPU to spare, because uh, I only have a 9 GTX and 960, so I don't have much to spare. See, it's at 100 right now. You can change these settings. Tail and behavior flags, none. Mode, override. Anti-analyzing setting must be 2 or 4, multi-sampling. And then here's where I disagree with... Uh, Let's see, anti-analyzing, 
make sure transparency mode that's also enabled so he wants transparency super sampling to be sparse grid super sampling but that makes the game absolutely horrible it makes it look <laughs> basically like pixels and it's absolutely disgusting please do not use it if you want to actually use it use regular super sampling 248 but again has high C high GPU usage and I don't have it to spare so that's an optional <clears throat> and then here's another optional which is talk which is down sampling I have a guide here which I will link in the description as well uh, if we look at these two screenshots of mine We can see the difference. This is non down sampling and this is down sampling. It's most again most noticeable most noticeable in the ground. It looks much more nicer on the ground. Again, this is this isn't as uh use resource dependent as uh what was it called? Anti analyzing. But uh again it's more than I have usage for it. But uh, I'll go through the steps. Again, this is um, it makes the game look nicer, but uses a uh, GPU. Do 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 do. Okay, so we go to the NVIDIA control panel. NVIDIA control panel. You can close NVIDIA Inspector now. NVIDIA control panel. Okay, also, configure, f well, this is something every person should do. Surra configure surround phys x, something everyone should do. You go here, by default it's auto select, recommended, do not do this. There will almost always be your CPU bottleneck, so you want to process on your graphics card. Then you click apply. Again, it takes a while sometimes. Okay, applied. Now on to uh, downsampling. This is increase uh, view image, how nice it looks, but uh, makes the game run a bit slower, lower FPS slightly. I don't have the resources for it, so I can't do it uh, stably. So we perform scaling, GPU. Click uh, apply. Oh, click yes. And then we go to manage 3D settings. Manage 3D settings. This time we're gonna be looking at our global settings instead of our program settings. Global settings. We go to DSR factors, and we just basically you can click all of these. Click apply. The most important. And then you click OK. Then you click apply over there. I'm not actually going to be doing it. I'm just going to be looking at uh, my own guide of a video, and we can just go through the steps. Okay, so then we go to change resolution, change resolution, and then by default we don't have anything above our current one, but after we click the DSR factors, we have the dynamic super resolutions. Then we can click apply, say I wanted to make it 4x, this is basically twice my resolution, so I have 920, 10, uh, 920, 10.8x1080. Then this goes to double that. And then like restart the game, reopen it. And then you can notice that everything's smaller. And uh, that the in-game has more options about how sizes I have under the video. Resolution, different options available. And then you also notice that my FPS counter on the top left is now smaller because the screen is uh, it's putting it on a larger screen and then smushing it 
onto my smaller screen. Note that uh, because the screen is so much larger, you're probably going to have to increase your mouse sensitivity by about 50% to make to compensate for the larger screen. You can do this using Razor Synapse, mouse, performance, and then just moving the bar. <clears throat> Razor Synapse, performance, then change this thing. Okay. Multiple things I've learned about, about this have come through links that are in the description of Austin and Lester's video guides. I do not agree with everything that he has said or done in his videos. That's why I haven't been going directly off of them and only just been going off the guides that he has been going off of, but uh, still exciting. Okay, I hope you found this useful. I definitely found different uh, large performance changes and image quality changes by doing these things. Uh, the game looks a lot nicer and actually has higher FPS than when I started with a default ins uh, installation. I hope you can do the same. Please tell me if you like. Good FPS, let us play the game. Yay.